So here's problem number 21 from section 10.1 in our book, and we're going to follow the four-step process to see if there's a difference in the family history of breast cancer amongst our experimental group and our control, our control group. Okay, so population one, uh, women in control group. Population two, women in experimental group. Parameter of interest, and on today's quiz, that parameter is always going to start out with the word proportion. Proportion with family history of breast cancer. All right? So far, so good? Our H naught claim is that there is no difference. That P1 equals P2. Now, the study is asking the question, is there a difference? Now, notice that the is there a difference question does not bias towards one direction or the other. We just want to know, are they different? So my HA claim, I believe, is going to be P1 not equal to P2. What would be a reasonable alpha value? 0.05. All right, so there's our step one done. Let's go to step two. Okay. This is one of the cases where I would say I'm biased, but they would say random. <clears throat> and probably their word random is better in this instance. We're talking about the random assignment of women to one of these two groups. They say they use random assignment. So we're good on the unbiased claim. Okay. Um, on the independence question, remember that when we do two sampling tests, we have well, one question is, what's our relationship to the population? The population of people in the control group is really the population of all possible women. Is it bigger than our sample size of, or is it at least 10 times our sample size of 29,000? 294. And indeed, there are lots of women out there who potentially could be in the control group, meaning they're not on some special diet in a breast cancer study. Okay, what about population two? 19,541. And indeed, the number of women who are potentially on a low-fat diet while having breast cancer is a really large number. So I think we're okay. And the last question is, is there independence between samples? Meaning, is there a relationship between the women that are in one group versus the women in the other group? Independence between samples. And the answer to that is, random assignment makes independence in this case. So we're good there. So last check is, do we have normality? To do the normality, we need this thing called the p-hat the p -hat value. Well, if we combine both samples into one big population, because our assumption is on this issue, there is no difference. This is where I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to step three, do the work on the calculator, then I'll know what p hat is because step three on the calculator tells me what p hat is. So let me switch over to the calculator. There's my calculator. And now let's run the numbers part, and then we'll have a p hat value that we can bring back to step two. Uh, let's see, stats, tests, and what we're looking for is the two prop Z test. Zero test 
Six. Six? Oh, sorry. Six. All right. Um, in group one, which was our control group, there were 4,029 women with a family history of breast cancer out of 29,294. In our experimental group, there were 3,396 women with a history of family history of breast cancer out of 19,541. And then our alternate hypothesis is not equal. So I think we're ready to go on this. Calculate. Okay. What's important to me? What's important to me is that in step three, we grab the P, the P value and the Z value, and we write it out correctly. So I'm going to write out that the Z value is negative 1.59, and the probability that the absolute value of Z is greater than 1.59 is equal to 0.1114. All right. The other gift that the screen gives us is the p hat value, which is the last thing on that line. The p hat value is 17 percent. What does that mean in the context of this problem? That when you combine those 19,000 women with those 29,000 women, 17 percent of them had a family history of breast cancer. And that's what I'm going to use at 17%. That's what I'm going to use down here in step two. P hat is 0.17. So when I do 29,000, now let me write it out explicitly. N1 times P hat is 29,294 times 17%. Is that greater than or ten? Oh, yeah. N1 times Q hat is going to be 29,294 times 83%. Is that greater than 10? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the same thing is going to be true on these other ones. N2 P hat is going to be 19,451 times 17%. That's certainly greater than or equal to 10. And then N2 Q hat is equal to 19,541 times 83%. And that certainly is greater than or equal to 10. So we have normality. We have, a, we have plenty of evidence to suggest that the sampling distribution of the difference of, sam of, the difference of sample proportions is normal. And now we're ready to go to that last phase, which is the interpretation step. Because, because what? Because the p-value of 0.1114 is greater than the alpha value of 0.05, we fail to reject H0. And then the last part of this problem is, what does that mean in the context of this particular problem? There is Insufficient evidence to suggest that the that there 
is a difference difference in the proportion proportion of the p of I, one, I, I can't believe I can, didn't even spell difference right. This is so disgusting. Diff er and portion of family history of breast cancer. In other words, the researchers got what they wanted. These two groups on that one instance are alike enough that there's not a substantial difference. So that's what a good four-step significance test would look like. Can I ask a question? What would it look like if I, instead of asking for a significance test, if I asked you for a confidence interval? How would this be different? Well, step one is different in that we don't have any of this if it's a confidence interval. The check for normality wouldn't use this p hat because we don't have that h dot assumption. So we would be using p one hat, p two, p one hat, q one hat, p two hat, q two hat, instead of that combined. And obviously the the calculation is different, but the calculation in terms of plugging it into your calculator would be a lot easier. But um, yeah, the explanation, because there's no H not to, to reject. Really yeah, it's all different. Okay. All right, Paul, this is your question. Have we, have we given you what you needed? Yeah, I didn't understand, like, the P-hat thing, but clarify. The, the idea of the combined, the combined proportion. All right. All right, Jake. Can I get a, a new one of these? Oh, yeah, absolutely.